This program was brought to you by Collar Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University. Quite a challenge to uh, summarize the history of venture in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and I would like to say that when the topic uh, came about, I uh, thought, well, What's the way around it? And first of all, why is that important? It is important when you study the future of venture, we know that everything is new, but nevertheless, as scientists who are used to uh, you know, data, whether you are a historian or you are economist or statistician, you've got to look for where you are coming from if you want to know where to go. And uh, this has been, for me at least, a very useful exercise. And to be frank, I did not expect much. For me, the biggest worry was what to say more to people who come to scientific and uh, venture events that, don't, that would tell them something new. And I did discover things which were new to me, not, on, not so much on the event that we all know, but to the relevance to the particular topic. So. Uh, that's basically is the exercise. The exercise was to identify okay, the uh, events that are critical to the world of venture. And we'll talk a little bit about what we mean by venture. Venture is a f fantastic word because it means different things to different people or to the same person different times. So really, we can manipulate the world. And uh, so that's, that's basically the idea. I'll be more specific. We have 100 years. Uh, we make it uh, in a dichotomical way, 1914 to 2014. We got to stop and to start somewhere. We know where we stop, uh, to start somewhere. And uh, we cover here uh, inventions, okay, uh, discoveries, companies, people. So in other words, it's not limited to a list of the biggest inventions for instance, or the biggest corporation. We try to be as holistic as possible. It's definitely an ongoing process for us. It's a first step. I just can tell you that basically listening to the morning session, I had another event that I will not tell you what it is because it will be too embarrassing, uh, that should go back, to, that should be added to the list, okay? So that's sort of the, the uh, nature of the exercise that is unlimited, unbounded in time in terms of ch changes, and the other matter, of course, is subjectivity. I will come back to this point of subjectivity. So uh, this is the first step, uh, and I think this, is the, uh, this week is the first presentation. Um, in terms of uniqueness is that we also cover influences. It's not only the outcome, it's not only uh, the discoveries, it's also influences. So here is what we, and by the way, my co-author on this is Anne Iveson sitting here, and uh, the difficult questions should be referred to her. Uh, this is just a summary, okay? And I'll go through some of these events, but we try to give a proper representation to different periods, not to focus only on the near future or vice versa, and to cover all the various uh, uh, tracks, so to speak. Some of them are enablers, the ones on the left, and the other ones are the type of um, outcomes and discoveries. Now, very few words in general before I plunge into a few of the specific events, uh, and that, okay, so we have, if you wish, 147 events, or, or, and uh, by the way, some of them are lumped together, a few of them in one go, because we couldn't make really a distinction between some of them. They are kind of related to each other. I will talk a little bit about the, the complexities. So the criteria in general were, uh, obviously it has to be significance on its own merit. Uh, just an example, the penicillin that you'll see in the, even in the short list there, solving issues of uh, antibiotics, deserve its own, to be on its own merit. Others are disruptive by nature and prompting other, and that's the platforms that we talk about. They are enablers to a whole list of other events to take place because they are so disruptive by nature. And the other matter that is less technological is commercialization. Uh, and maybe the example there will be, and I'll come to that, uh, you'll see in, in, in the few examples, is the Model T car, okay? Cars were before, but it's the uh, 
commercialization. Another example of that would be uh, BASIC, the language. There have been programming languages before. What BASIC did is to change from using uh, programs, Fortran and others, by professionals, by computer uh, you know, engineers and, and programmers into the, into the mob, into, into the uh, whole population. And that's something that many times makes a, a, a tectonial sh change in terms of uh, total shift. We are agnostic whether it comes from a corporation or from a startup. Uh, and, uh, you know, just quickly focusing about biases, We'd, I'll just focus on one issue, and that's the, uh, the uh, uh, time distance. We do have a bias to the near future. There is no doubt that things like um, laptop versus PC looks to us as totally different matters. It's a huge, you know, as I said, tactonian change. It's, it's paradigm shift. I'm sure that in 50 years, that may not be the view, right? That could be viewed as one blip. So there is nothing to do about that. Uh, so that's one thing. We have a better resolution to the near future. And certain things that happen, uh, for example, with regard to social networks and the like, certain different companies that arise look to us as quite different. eBay versus Amazon, pretty sure that in 20, 30 years, that will be lumped together, if at all. Um, the other matter about the short distance is that we are unable to judge the importance each ways. And I'll give you one example is the Higgs uh, uh, boson, Higgs particle, that was discovered a year or two ago. Uh, we really don't know whether this is going to lead to anything. However, everybody tells us that this is very important, so we included it, okay? We just give science the, the, the kudos. Time is too short to tell whether it will stay there. On the other hand, other things like uh, Bitcoin, is that going to revolutionize uh, currencies, international currency? We did not include it. Didn't still have the passage of time, and we could be wrong. So that's nothing to do about it. It's just too short. Uh, Google Glass, you know, all these wearables, they are not there yet. They might be in five years. We don't know. Um, so, in fact, in my talk, I will focus more about the long history because I think I have a better, better understanding there. Um, the... Other issue, big issue, is incrementality. There are a lot, a lot of things that happen that are very incremental. And as a result, it was very difficult to get them in. I'll give you a couple of examples quickly. One of them is a lot of, of the household appliances. I try to, to have, a, we have a bias, okay? The bias is that we look at the IT. We are very, very much IT oriented. Most of us, because we do read about that, we do know the high tech, not only in Israel, right? So the Googles of the world and Amazons and, 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 and uh, uh, Intel and so on. Um, less attention is given to the uh, is given to the to the myomed, to the guys on the other side, right? Uh, for example, certain innovations in areas like materials, which is far away, not only for me but for most of the people, really on a daily life. I just had to rely on others. So the float glass process, we were told that this is important. Okay, I have to take the world, this is important. Or the graphene discovery, people got the Nobel for this, but this was not a criteria for us, but uh, just a validation. Uh, we did hear about the Facebook, okay? Uh, but the graphene is, is, is probably at least equally important. Um, talking about um, engineering is totally missing from what I have. And, uh, and other areas in, uh, in construction, uh, as I said, in home appliances are missing because I couldn't find a particular point in, point in time, a particular event in dams and in engineering and, and bridges. Uh, as I said, in, in home appliances, lucky I found the air conditioning, the Freon in 1928 or something, so I included that, but all the rest are missing. Some of them are just impossible to remember, and they're not written there. I'll give you one example. I was so happy for two days, I was happy. I, because I thought about it. This is the ATM machine, right? It doesn't fall in a particular track, but think about your life without ATMs. Would have been very different, right? Air conditioning, by the way, falls in very close category, right? Uh, things that do affect our life in a very significant way. Lastly, before I go to um, 
some of the results is, um, well, two observations. One is about incrementality is there are some people who are tremendous and didn't make the list. Uh, I'll just mention one, which is Nikola Te Tesla. He's, not, he's known now because the Tesla car has been named in recognition uh, for him, uh, after him. But this is a guy who has the, the, the record of the number of patents in the world, okay? He made tremendous uh, contributions, and if, the more I read about it, the more I discovered, in areas like, of course, the alternate uh, uh, currency, this is why it's related to the car, to the motor, even though Edison got the credit, but to the neon bulbs and to the radar and even to the early transistor uh, model. So, but some of it was before our period. But the other one is that he, he was not the greatest. It was not the biggest innovation. So he didn't make it, okay? Is that really important? Perhaps not. Uh, uh, you know, we... We do have these events. The other example about, that I would like to point out here is the matter of subjectivity. Uh, again, there is no, no doubt that things are, are different. You know, uh, we have different views. Uh, about a month ago, there has been an article, or you know, I saw on, on the screen by CNBC, uh, about the 10 biggest innovation in the last 105 years. Beat me why 105 years. So be it, nine out of 10 fell within our time period, this 100 years. Guess how many were included in our 147? Remember, these are the nine biggest event according to the CNBC. You would expect that nine, if not nine, maybe eight, will be included in all our 147 events, right? Four. Five did not make it. Even when I read it after that, didn't make it. Okay? So, some of it you can say is uh, superficiality, probably by on their side, and the other one is perhaps uh, is a judgment. i give you one example. They included the Concorde. For me, the Concorde was not, imp is not that important. Most of you probably don't remember, you don't even know what it is. Anyway, uh, and they didn't give reasons, so I could not even be con uh, convinced. In terms of outcome, before I go and give you some uh, examples, is uh, we do have, uh, we, I will talk a lot about the impact of global political forces as a major driver of innovation. I will talk about the uh, matter that we generate institutes, that we create here enterprises, the transformation from startup to a platform to, to, uh, to an institution that can provide much more support and much more legacy is, is quite critical. And no doubt that a lot, a lot of the innovation come from large corporations. I, despite all of this, it's amazing the power of individuals. And I will use one example. One individual that can change the world or within his area. Uh, it's, a particular, it's a male, so I'm saying his. And finally, uh, this element that I thought I would get more support for multidisciplinary, I do see in the last period, but I didn't see that much as far as I understand in the earlier one. So here I picked up a few events. I did not play, Bell Labs came up this morning, and that's amazing because it, it is on my short list as well. Uh, I will talk about that. I will not go over all of those, but uh, it, I talked a little bit about the penicillin. It was also a platform for antibiotic drugs, more than that. I will focus only about four of those. Uh, maybe I will say a word about the car. The car, as I mentioned, the importance was the fact it went to the crowd, okay? All of a sudden, you have many people who can fa drive far. There was a railway 100 years before, didn't get into our period of 100 years. Railway did the same. What it does allow people to move far from, to far places, which means not only agricultural, but also uh, tourism, hotels, roads, demand for steel. This was a major propeller, major, major uh, uh, factor to uh, accelerate uh, industrialism as well as innovation in multiple areas. So that's why the, uh, the mass production of the car is definitely very important. To focus on a few events, let's go, uh, let me just jump here. Uh, a word about Bell Lab, again, is, is those of you who don't 
you know, uh, are not in the age, so to speak, quickly what it was. Uh, it was set by Bell, which is the uh, equivalent of the, I mean, the telephone company, uh, now known as AT&T, uh, and it was a laboratory. But it was a laboratory in a very, very generous way. It was a monopoly, and they had to do something in return for being monopoly, okay? So as a result, they were spending lots of money on pure science, or slightly applied, but a lot of it pure. And the number of inventions and innovations that came from Bell Lab, primarily from the New Jersey place, is amazing. That's include the radio, astronomy, laser, uh, information theory, Unix operation, even to far fields such as the Apollo program, anti-craft missiles, and so on. Um, you know, in my area of economics, you know, very eminent professors like Stiglitz spend most of their career, early career, over there. Uh, seven Nobel Prizes uh, came from a world for war completed while there. So that's uh, an example of a platform uh, in a particular way, and the role of government, if you wish. The next example, um, which is uh, quite shocking, actually, and frankly, it was not originally on my list. It came very late. Uh, and that's, let me just, I mean, if you read this, this is really shocking, okay? Uh, it is shocking that the dismissal, firing all the Jewish scientists from the universities when the Third Reich came about in 1933, um, was done deliberately. And the statement there that you can read, even if it means cleansing and, and stopping science for, for a few years, that's all right. Well, you should remember that primarily Germany, but also Austria, were the primacy, super primacy of science at that time, really. For 50 years of hegemony of science, and much of it was by, by Jewish people, uh, not all, but uh, a lot of it, and these people were let to go. Now, they were let to go, thank God, uh, not only scientists, there were others who are you know, humanities, there are people like Sigmund Freud who don't contribute to science in our way, but they are. And the UK government was very active uh, absorbing them, as well as the Rockefeller Foundation who set, set up a fund to take them. And you got names of people, they were talking about hundreds of scientists who fled uh, Nazi Germany before the war. And people included, uh, you know, Albert Einstein to start with, uh, you got Leo Slizard, who co-signed with Einstein the important letter uh, to Roosevelt to, to the need for atomic bomb. Uh, Niels Bohr, despite the name, he was Jewish. Um, Edward Teller, these are, okay? these are well-known names, but the list of others, uh, Otto Robert Frisch, Rudolf Priels, Felix Bloch, they all un were unknown to me, and they were all behind the atomic bomb. Los Alamos, the nuclear facilities, etc. cetera. Uh, this was Hitler's gift, this is not my term, to, uh, to the West. And frankly, I think this is what changed the war. It's this gift, that unintended gift by Hitler. Uh, it's a single key to the fact, not only by the way to the bomb, but also to Enigma in Britain, you know, solving the code um, and, and to development of, of the computers. The, um, needless to say, most of them, well, 15 of these got Nobel, and most of them got jobs at the top American and British universities. So the core of MIT and, and Harvard, Stanford, Berkeley, you name them, uh, as well as uh, in the UK, the top schools, are populated, and, and they were the core scientists. Uh, it was very interesting, uh, a few nights ago in the Dan David Award, the Tel Aviv University, one of the winners, Marvin Minsky, who's considered the father of artificial intelligence, he said, he gave kudos to these people who were his professors at MIT who set it up, the lab there. So it's beyond winning the war, it's also setting up MIT, Oxford, Cambridge to be what they are, uh, Princeton, and so on. So that's the, uh, uh, the Third Reich, which should be distinguished from the war. Uh, the war is a different story. And I will, you know, leave the war for later, but I would like because, how much time do I have? I can go, okay. Uh, I would like to switch gear to the power of individual. People give credit for the Silicon Valley to William Shockley. 
Uh, William Shockley had this Shockley laboratory. He was the inventor of the transistor, and uh, he created this lab at the Beckman Institute, and uh, with young, very brilliant PhD students that a good bunch of them, eight, left known as the Treasure Eight. Okay, they include names like Gordon Moore, who started Intel, still alive, and uh, known for the Moore uh, Law, uh, included Eugene uh, Kleiner from Kleiner Perkins, and six more. Well, you know, in fact, there is nothing about William Shockley, British, by the way, and, uh, that is related to the spirit of the valley. Nothing. The guy was dogmatic, obviously ultra brilliant, impossible to work with, watching after employees, sending detectives after his secretaries. The guy was absolutely lunatic, okay? Uh, apparently his family didn't, didn't know that he died. They read it in the newspaper a few weeks after that. That's the sort of guy he was. There is nothing about him that tells us about the spirit of the valley as we know it, as we go about. So even though he is associated as the father of the valley, the more I read that I discovered this is the man who deserved the, uh, the credit. His name is Fred Terman. Uh, people didn't, most people don't know who, who heard the name Fred Terman before. Nobody. I did not. Well, he was the dean of engineering at Stanford, and he understood the importance to bring the, uh, to, to, for collaboration with the industry. So what he did is to develop a park, and first of all, he took his own students who started, you know, Hewlett and Packard, who started HP, and put them there. Uh, then he brought in Eastman Kodak and GE and Lockheed and, and Varian, which was the first one. Um, so they were all started to know what the Silicon Valley is all about, extension of, you know, the, the commercial park, the corporate park that is next to, to Stanford. He then had the vision to understand people need to live there, and he started developing uh, with the community the roads, the shopping centers, retail services, so people will find it good to live there. And he developed the valley as we know it all about. Okay, uh, very modest man, and, and, and he, so he's, he basically transformed uh, science and, and the clusters to the way we know it. I will uh, move on again. I just pick up not the most important ones, but I would say the, the, the more representatives of certain configuration. I'm not going to talk about Intel here. I'm not going to talk about Facebook, okay, for obvious reasons. Um, let me pick up uh, another one, and maybe, maybe the last one in terms of event, I do have another slide, and that's something which, again, was quite... Interesting when I saw that. You see, we are talking here about the late 60s in Northern California, in San Francisco, in the Valley. Parallel to the development of the Silicon Valley, there was another thing happening. And it was, you know, you can call it the flower children, the hippies movement. Not only there, not only there. But what that meant, it did mean a total change in life. Because, you know, you, you, got, you don't need to work for the large corporations, okay? You can experiment. And experimentation in lifestyle also means that you can work for home or from the garage or have your own startup. You don't need to belong to the big corporation. And that was a shift in mentality at that time. That happened at the same time. And, um, you know, and it was worldwide. Now, the, remember who were the people there. The people are those who, many of them decided to go for graduate studies because they didn't want to join the, the, uh, to be drafted to the uh, Vietnam War. So they were revolting already in some sense, and they were smart, okay? So we got this anti-war movement over there. Then you got uh, um, very liberal views, and the other thing that developed in, in, in San Francisco at the time was even things, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but like appreciation to other countries. And two examples would be the, the Zen Buddhism, that started there, which means that immigrants are not just new people to the melting pot, but we can appreciate also and get from them. We respect them equally. Of course, the other thing that happened at the same time was, you know, in, in, in the UK, with the pop, with the Beatles in particular, even the Indian music of, of, of George Harrison, you know, it's, it's really embracing the, the Asia in that sense, the, the different. So foreign immigrants are, are you know, we have to learn from them equally. And that's very important for science, as we all know. 
Uh, so that's, a, as you can see, uh, there are social influences that I don't quite know the full extent of them, but certainly this is, has to do with the liberation of the mind. And to, to summarize, I do have a quick quiz to you, um, my, my, my esteemed audience. The question number one is the first computers. Any guess? No? Computers. The answer is woman. One of the first, uh, what we call today the full-fledged computer was the ENIAC at the University of Pennsylvania. By the way, it's not clear which was the first computer built because four of them were done during the war. The Z3 in Berlin, uh, one in Iowa State, one in Pennsylvania, and uh, one the eight computers uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the UK uh, collected. Uh, I'll get their name in a second. The Colossus, yeah. Uh, the reason we don't know which one was the first, the, the German one was bombed, and there are no records. There is one picture from 41. We don't know where it was started. It probably was the first. Uh, the others, the data came only out from in 1970 after so many years of uh, release of uh, information. So uh, there is not much information from that time. But probably the Nike is the full-fledged computer. It was primarily for ballistic calibration and, co and computations. The people that, op by the way, it, it used 150 kilowatts of, of, uh, of energy, of voltage, and the rumors are that when it was lit, the city of Philadelphia had dim down impact on its electricity, on the lights. Uh, it was so colossal. In any event, it was operated by people, literally. And like you call today, I don't know, gardener, engineer, they were called computers because they were computing. They happened to be primarily female because it was during the war time. These were you know, uh, mathematicians and others from scientists who were drawn from the universities uh, to, to serve over there. And these are the first computers. Question, the second question, because uh, a good chunk of you are Israelis. How many Israelis we got here? Just raise your hand, that's a good chunk. Okay, but everybody's allowed to answer if you know. Uh, the, the question is, there is a single inventor. I have two Israelis on the list. One of them is physically here in this building now. I don't know if in the room. Are you here, Eagle? Eagle early from Yuzma is, 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 is one on the list, but he's on the other side of enablers. In terms of inventors, we have one that is deceased for quite some time. So who is this guy? And before you answer, I'll give you a hint. It's not in ITC, and it's not in Biomed. Wow. Tough. Who is the guy? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I'll give you, I'll tell you his name. And maybe after I tell you your name, maybe you'll be a little bit more, uh, maybe that will do it for you. So the name is Simcha Blas. Anybody heard the name Simcha Blas? Hmm, that's even more interesting, right? Well, he started drip uh, irrigation. He really understood the way that, uh, how to use friction and uh, so that the water pressure will be such that the holes will be big enough so that particles of dust will not clog them. And drip in irrigation is very important if you think about the future solving the problem of hunger in the world because you do have half desert land, the only solution there to make it arable land is because they don't have water either, is through drip irrigation. So metafim is fine, but really the impact is more than that. I'm beyond my time, but uh, thank you for listening. This program was brought to you by Kola Institute of Venture at Tel Aviv University.